I do think that Thomas's question is a fair one. Don't you think? Jesus is like, well, you know the way. I was like, I don't even know where we're going, right? If I can't type the destination into Google Maps, how am I possibly going to get there, Jesus? How could I possibly make my way where you're going when I don't know where it is that you go? You see, it's interesting to me that so often we can make our faith, our faith journey, which by the way, maybe should clue us into what the path of faith is like. Not so much faith destination, but faith journey. But we get so caught up in destination. In, in where we're going and how we get there. You know, there's a, a few different ways that we do this, not just with our faith, but all the way around. Sometimes with our faith, we can treat it a little bit like um, we, we get the golden ticket and now we can just wait in line forever. I don't know that that's exactly what Jesus is calling us to do. Or I think about it this way. Uh, there's a, a tour guide. He's a famous tour guide. He only leads small tour groups throughout New York City. His name is Timothy Speed Levitch because he talks really quickly. But his whole tour mentality is talking about the difference between commuting and what he calls cruising. Okay? And commuting and cruising. He says most people in New York City, they, they commute. And I would say most of us too, right? We get in the car, I want the destination, and everything between me and the destination is a barrier to me getting where I'm going. I want to get there as fast as I can. I want to get there safely. But I want to get there, right? It's, it's a commute. We kind of got our, our heads down, either literally on the streets walking past people or metaphorically, we're locked in. We're commuting. What he invites people to do on his tours is to cruise, which he says is enjoy the walk through the city. Pay attention to what's going on around you. This metaphor helps refocus us a little bit into it's not always just about getting where we're going lest we forget the way. Sometimes we forget the way because it's so familiar to us, right? Have you ever driven somewhere and your mind took you there without you knowing it? You're like, oh, I'm here. Have you ever tried to drive somewhere and you, you automatically took a few turns to go somewhere else? You know, you're on your way to the grocery store and you went to work instead. <laughs> you went to drop the kids off at school on Saturday afternoon on accident. We, we get so caught up in commuting that we forget what's going on around us. We get so wrapped up in the destination that we don't pay any attention to the journey. Luther would remind us that this life, this life of faith, this journey of faith is more about becoming than being perfect. We are always on the way. We are always people becoming made new. Jesus is constantly calling people to follow, so it's no wonder he would remind us that he is the way. And this way, truth, and life is known not by somebody handing you a map, not as important as it is, graduates, by reading books and learning new facts that you can internalize and synthesize and move with you to know what's going on next. But this is a way, a truth, and a life that is known in relationship. That is known in relationship. So while degrees feel like destinations, I encourage you to enjoy the journey and to pay attention to the relationships that come up along the way. You see, as Christians, we proclaim that there is a way, there is a truth with a capital T, there is life abundant to the full, everlasting, and eternal, and the way, the truth, and the life is known as a person, Jesus the Christ, which means we know him by relationship. We know this way because he walks with us and guides us. We've heard stories of Jesus as a shepherd keeping his flock on the path, going to find us when we wander. We know of Jesus, the truth, the one who speaks of things the way they are, the one who constantly reminds us that we are made in God's own image, that we bear the mark of 
God and that God loves each and every person. We know Jesus, Jesus who is the life, the one who could not be stopped by forces against life that sought to and did kill him, and yet his life was stronger. And we come to know him in relationship as we spend time with him, as we are members, one body of an one another of his body, the church. You see, we can get caught up in destinations. It's hard. We want to know where we are going. I love, in fact, our adult Sunday school class, we even just watched um, an episode of Twilight Zone and watched it. This is my plug for adult Sunday school. When it gets started back up, okay, we're on break for the summer, but, you know, sometimes we watch the Twilight Zone in class. But we watched one about heaven. I love thinking about heaven. What is heaven like? What is that like? And yet, we can get so wrapped up in the mystery of eternal life with God that we forget that God is with us right now, that God is bringing us to new life right now, that God has brought that way of life and love. They'll know we are Christians by our love to us now. So for our graduates who have their future open with great opportunity, hear these words of Jesus. You will do greater things even than I have done. Y'all, we should, we should note, right? Not not separate, but together in Christ will do greater things. But sometimes that openness of future is scary. I don't know where I'm going. I don't know what the final destination looks like now. Well, Jesus pulls our focus back today to knowing the way. And we do know the way, even it, when we don't know for sure what the destination looks like, because we know Jesus and his love for us revealed to us on the cross, revealed to us in his feeding, in his healing, in his forgiving again and again. For all of us, we have opportunity to hear those amazing words of Jesus. These, these maybe are some of the hardest words of the Bible for me, to trust when Jesus says, y'all will do greater things than I have done. And I go, how, Jesus? Because you have done such great things. You have brought life to the whole world. But Jesus has enough faithfulness in us that when we follow the way, that when we are together in Christ, we can do just the same things that Jesus has done and more. We can share this way and truth and life in the world. So... How do we know that we know the way? How do we know that we know the way? Don't, don't, how do we get past Thomas' question of where are we going? Or Phillips, please show us the Father. Well, there's our answer. You see, Jesus says, you have seen the Father in me. I am in the Father and the Father is in me by what I have done and by who I am. So our question when we wonder, what's the next step? How do I follow this path that is the way? Does it look like Jesus? Arms open, forgiveness offered, no condemnation. Does it sound like Jesus speaking new life to those who have been told that they are worthless? Does it increase the abundant life of those around? Does it spend time with those that Jesus spent most of his time with? Is it available and present and willing to remind you that you are known and loved by God? You see, then, then we come to know because it looks and sounds and acts like Jesus that this is the way, the truth, and the life. That it's leading us toward the things that we do know about our Father's house. What do we know? Well, it's expansive there's more than enough room for all, and Jesus has already prepared us a place there. The way of Jesus, the way of love that gives of itself time and time again for the life of the world is a way that leads us toward the expansive home of God. Jesus goes and prepares the way. Jesus is the way. So what is ours to do is to take the next right faithful step and follow. Amen.